Hey, what's up? I'm Matt Beat, and today we're talking about subtractive synthesis. There are different methods of synthesis. There's wavetable, granular, FM, but the most common is subtractive. In subtractive synthesis, we start with a harmonically rich waveform and we subtract overtones using filters. Before we can unpack what this means, we have to learn a little bit about sound. As complex as sound is, we can describe it pretty comprehensively using just three different characteristics. Amplitude, frequency, and timbre. Frequency is simple, it's just the pitch. So if I play this note and this note, they differ only in pitch. Amplitude is the volume, so if I play this note, you can hear that the volume swells over time. That's a change in amplitude. Timbre, or tone color, is a little bit more difficult to explain. Frequency and amplitude deal with easily quantifiable values, namely the number of cycles per second or the amount of air displacement by the sound. Timbre, however, deals with a quality of the sound, the tone color, based on its overtone structure. So the difference between this sound and this sound is one of timbre. The amplitude is the same and the frequency is the same, but the overtones are different in each sound. If two different instruments play the same note at the same volume, the difference is timbral. When designing a sound, it's important to pay attention to all three of these characteristics, frequency, amplitude, and timbre. It's also important to note that they change over time, they're dynamic, and good sound designers are very careful with the movement within their sounds. So let's figure out how to translate these elements into voltage. Synthesizers create electrical signals that directly translate into sound waves. To get our desired sound, we need to manipulate the sound waves in some way. Designers and engineers have developed hundreds of different modules that can adjust the sound in different ways. But generally, these modules perform three functions. A module can act as a generator, or source, that creates a signal. A module can act as a modifier, that transforms the input and then outputs the results. Or it can act as a controller, which adjusts the behavior of other modules. It's important to distinguish between modifiers and controllers, because the definitions are similar. Modifiers act on a signal, controllers act on another module. Often, modules perform multiple functions. So, for example, the signal created by a generator can be used to control another module, in which case it would be acting as both a generator or source and a controller. So now that we've laid out our concrete goals and our abstract methods, we can move on to our concrete tools, oscillators, filters, and amplifiers. An oscillator outputs a raw waveform. So, within our framework, we'd say that it generates an initial timbre at a given pitch. A filter removes and modifies overtones of that initial timbre. So, in our framework, we would say it modifies the timbre. Finally, the amplifier outputs the sound at a given volume. So, we could say that it modifies the amplitude. So, to summarize, every time a key is pressed, it generates a signal that controls the pitch of the oscillator. This oscillator then outputs a timbre at that given pitch. That timbre is modified by the filter. The amplitude is then modified by the amplifier. Each part of this chain can have other controllers acting on it, and those controllers can be generated and modified by other parts of the chain. While this may seem like a confusing way to conceptualize all of this, knowing the functions of modules and how they relate to each other can help a lot down the road when you're working on tricky patches. Next week, we'll do a quick introduction to oscillators. If you like this video, follow me on Instagram at thatbeat, or support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash thatbeat. Thanks for watching.